Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. The ensuing half hour is not intended as propaganda to abolish the relationship between mothers and sons. The twin institutions of filial piety and motherhood have survived too long under the aegis of the fourth commandment to stand in any grave danger of dissolution by a single dramatic diatribe. No, the tale you are about to hear merely seeks to point out that there can be too much of a good thing. And as someone said, be moderate in all things. We cry forbearance to mothers and beseech sons to render fully unto them only those things which are theirs, reserving all else for the women who will become the mothers of their children. Listen, listen then as Miss Agnes Moorhead stars in Don't Call Me Mother, which begins in just a minute. Here's Frankie Lane. I never feel like singing with a bad cold, so I take wonderful four-way cold tablets to relieve my cold misery fast. Right. Tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. So when you catch cold, take my advice. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve those nasty cold miseries and feel better quickly. Four-way, 29 and 59 cents. Here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. And now, Don't Call Me Mother, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. so happy together. Larry's father passed on when he was a little boy, and from that day on, I devoted my life to him, and as he grew, he devoted his to me. Laurie and Larry, what a lovely couple they make, my friends would joke, but it was true, we were a lovely couple. I and my handsome, tall son, he was everything a mother could ask for, considerate, polite, intelligent, and a good provider. Your mother... Yes, dear. Mother, I wonder if I could bring a friend home for dinner Saturday. Why, of course, dear. We're going to be out riding all day and we'll be pretty hungry. Could you make your famous beef stew the way I like it? The dumplings and the meat cut into teeny-weeny bite sizes the way you liked it when you were a teeny-weeny little boy. Oh, well, you don't have to go that far. I can cut my own meat now. Well, of course you can. I was just teasing. Well, don't tease me on Saturday, will you please, Mother? Is this a special friend? Yes. What's his name? It isn't a him. It's a her. A girl? Yes, Mother. Why, Larry, what's come over you? You've never been interested in girls. Don't you think it's about time I am? Well, I can't imagine why. Mother, the time comes when, when a man... Well, you're still a boy, Larry. I'm 25, Mother, and, and please remember that on Saturday. Well, all right, if you'll remember something, too. What? Something you've forgotten just now. Well, what, Mother? When you bring this... Woman to dinner, please remember to call me Laurie, not Mother. Do have another piece of persimmon pie, Roberta. Oh, I really couldn't, Mrs. Ryder. It's delicious, but I couldn't eat another bite. Larry, you will. No, no thank you, Mother. Laurie. But you've hardly eaten a thing, dear. I've had two pieces, Laurie. Such a wonderful dinner. I don't think I could ever learn to cook a meal like that. Oh, I don't know. It just takes practice. Oh, I could never find the time. What with my job? Well, and... no matter what, I've always managed to have a hot meal on the table for my Larry. Have I, dear? <laughs> yes, Laurie. Some more coffee, Roberta? Thank you, Larry. You're older than Larry, aren't you, Roberta? A little. I'm 28. Larry always seems younger than his age. 
He's led a very sheltered life. He doesn't seem too young to me. Really? Well, I mean, Larry is a man. Is he? Well, I, I, I suppose to a mother, a son never really grows up. But then you wouldn't know about that. I hope to, someday. Well, I'm sure you will. When the right man comes along for you. Mrs. Ryder, the right man has come along for me. He has? Well, congratulations, my dear. I hope you'll be very happy. We expect to be, don't we, darling? Yes, dear. Larry, is this true? Well, yes, Mother. Roberta and I are going to be married. Oh. Oh, no. You can't. You can't, Larry. You... My, Mother, Larry. what is it? What's the matter? Roberta, hand me a glass of water. Oh. Here, here, Mother. Take some of this. But, Mother, what is it? Oh, Larry, I... I I didn't want you to know. Know what, Mother? Now you do. I don't know what you're talking about. My heart. My heart, Larry. I I have a a heart condition. Sudden shock. The doctor said I must be careful. Mother, I... I'm sorry, Mrs. Ryder. I shouldn't have sprung it on you so suddenly. Well, the doctor warned me again. You just lie down on the couch and and rest for a few moments. No, no, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right now. Well, as you see, Roberta, I, I, I need Larry. So do I, Mrs. Ryder. I love him. Well, so do I. And anyway, my dear, you're, you're much too old for him. So are you. What do you mean by that remark? Merely that it's time you let him go. It's time you let him grow up. Larry, are you going to let this... Woman, insult me, and you... We've talked it all over, Laurie. She's right. I will give you my permission. I'll never give you my permission. I'd like your permission and your blessing, Laurie, but I don't need it. I am of age, you know. You mean to say you'd walk out on your poor sick mother, leave her alone to die? Yes, literally to die of a broken heart. Of course not, Mother. We'll take care of of you. Of course, if you're really sick, you can live with us. Never. So long as I'm alive, Laurie belongs with me. Mrs. Ryder, I've got to say this. Larry and I are going to be married. Even if it's the death of you. Then listen to me, Roberta, and you listen carefully. If you try to take Larry away from me, it'll be the death of you. Little you know about the little white tablet. In the little green pocket roll Just a-waiting for the moment when you need them To bring your acid indigestion under control Tums are the little white tablets In the little green pocket roll Tums for the tummy, T-U-M-S Bring relief quicker than you'd ever guess Best for any kind of acid distress Keep them handy in the pocket roll Keep your tummy under Tums control Tums are fast, effective, and safe Tums relieve the discomfort of acid indigestion quickly With no danger of acid rebound Sometimes caused by harsh alkalizers Always carry Tums, ten cents Three roll pack a quarter New Tums six roll pack with free metal carrier, 49 cents And now, starring Miss Agnes Moorhead, act two of Don't Call Me Mother. It was wrong, all wrong for Larry to get married. This girl, this woman was too old for him. She was not good enough for him. She was... Oh, who knows what? It's just someone who works in the same office, don't you see, Larry? I've known her for more than a year. You've kept her a very big secret. I had to. I knew you wouldn't like the idea. But you went right on seeing her behind my back. Yes, until I was sure. And you're sure? I'm sure, Mother. Don't call me Mother. What are you sure of, Larry? That I'm in love with her. Love? 
What's love? It's something we've each got to find out about in his own way. Well, isn't my love enough for you? No. Larry. I'm sorry, Mother... Laurie, but the way I feel about Roberta is, is different from the way I feel about you. I'm sure that there's enough love in my heart for both of you. Oh, Larry, my dear, sweet little boy, trying so hard to be grown up. Please. Don't you suppose Laurie knows what's best for you? Hasn't Laurie always been right? Yes, of course you have, but this is a decision a man must make for himself. Without any consideration for others? I have considered you. I will always look after you. I wasn't thinking of myself. I was thinking of Roberta. Roberta? Yes. Will you always look after Roberta? Of course. Will you always be able? Well, of course, barring unforeseen accidents. Your accident has already occurred. What do you mean? You were born. What? You never should have been born, Larry. Why? Why, why do you say that? Because... Because your father was insane. Mother. Don't call me mother. Why didn't you tell me before? Well, I hoped I never would have to. I've always told you he died when you were a baby. Well, he didn't die. He was taken away to an asylum. He lived a long, long time until quite recently. He's insane. Hopelessly insane. Have uh, I in... Inherited. No one can be sure. The doctors don't know. But do you want to take that chance? Do you want to put Roberta through what I've been through? I, I, don't I, you I, see, my dear, if you really love her, you'll give her up. Yes, I, I suppose so. And you will? Won't you, dear? I don't know, Mother. I, I don't know what to do now. heard a more cockeyed story in my life. You don't believe it, do you, Larry? Of course I do. Do you think if this were true, she could ever have kept quiet about it so long? Why not? Because she thrives on emotional blackmail. She'd have used this long ago to get her way. Just, just the way she used that, that phony heart attack the other night. Phony? Sure. She's as strong as an ox. Her heart's probably in better shape than mine. At least since you started making it beat faster. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. I like it that way. Don't you see, darling? Your sainted mother is using every trick in the book to break us up. But this thing about my father... Well, what difference does it make? You... You don't care if he was insane? Of course not. He couldn't have been nuttier than I am. What? I must be crazy to be in love with you. I guess so. But I am. Sometimes I wonder why you're, you're so bright and, and strong and so capable, and I... I'm... Well, I'm just me. And I like you being just you. I wish it didn't upset Mother so... Listen to me, Larry, my boy. It's about time your mother learned the facts of life. And fact number one is that boys will be boys, and being boys, they are bound to like girls. And the girls they like are never, never, never the girls their mothers like, because their mothers don't like any girls messing around with their little boys. Yes, I suppose you're right. You no, know darn well I'm right. <sighs> well, now that that's taken care of, when are you going to make me an honest woman? I don't know. Soon, I hope. Soon? When? Well, I want to talk to Mother once more. Talk to her. You can't talk to her. Tell her. Tell her we're going to get married. And then tell her for me to drop dead. But he didn't tell me anything. Until it was too late. And, uh... So, Mother... Don't call me Mother. Laurie, we just dropped by to tell you we were married this morning. Oh. What do you expect me to do? Well, I'd like to know that you don't hold any hard feelings uh, against me. You know my feelings in this matter. They haven't changed. This may sound corny, Mrs. Ryder. 
But it would be nice to begin our married life with your blessing. You get no blessing from me, you kidnapper. Oh, come now, Mrs. Ryder. You're a witch! Trumpet, you're a thief! Well, let's go, Larry. We're not getting any place. You can't take my son from me. He's mine. He'll always be mine. Nothing you can do will ever change that. Love him. Go on. Love him as much as you know how. Give him everything you have. It'll mean nothing to him because you aren't me. Go on, take him away. Take him to the ends of the earth and he'll come back to me. Because he was meant for me and I was meant for him. Laurie and Larry. And everybody's saying what a lovely couple they make. I warned her. You can't say I didn't warn her. She went into this thing with her eyes wide open and she must face the consequences. So I went to work. My butcher was the first person I confided to because I knew he liked to share secrets with all his customers. Well, Mrs. Ryder, I hear you lost a son and gained a daughter. That's right, Mr. Stern. Kind of sudden, wasn't it? Oh, no, I wouldn't say so. Who is a lucky little lady? Someone from uh, the neighborhood? No. She worked in Larry's office. A brilliant girl. Maybe a little too brilliant. Oh? Well, how do you mean? Well, you know, Mr. Stearns, these bright ones, sometimes they're... They aren't too stable. Oh, oh, flighty, eh? No, no, not flighty. Moody. She has dark moods. I don't know. Well, now, that could be hard on Larry. Oh, don't you worry about Larry. He can always count on me to cheer him up. <laughs> That's right, Mrs. Ryder. He's a lucky boy to have you for a mother. And there were others. Old Mrs. Martin, who lived by her telephone. And my cleaning woman and the corner druggist. I let them all know that Larry's marriage was not as happy as it could be. And I tried... Successfully, I believe, to plant this thought with Larry when he came to visit me. I insisted he come alone. I would not receive that woman in my home. You look a little peaked, dear. Are you getting enough to eat? Of course, Laurie. Your wife has learned to cook, then. She does all right. But not as well as I do. She's learning. Well, I hope so, before you waste away. Are you happy, darling? Truly happy? Yes, uh, I'm happy. You don't seem to be. What is it, dear? What's worrying you? Nothing. Come on now, tell Laurie. I, I promised not to. We've always been honest with each other, dear, and that must never change. Now, well, what's troubling you? All right, then. Roberta's going to have a baby. Oh. Yours? Why, yes. But you aren't sure? Oh, uh, no, but... You can't be sure, can you? Well, how could you be sure? Now you can be sure of only one thing. This is why she wanted to marry you so desperately. <laughs> this is why she took you away from me. Don't you see? Can't you see that now? Well, uh, I... I won't permit it. I won't let it happen. I won't have you the father of another man's child. But you're only jumping to conclusions. Oh, no, no. I'm certain I know her kind of woman. I told you, Larry. Over and over I told you this marriage was wrong. Perhaps now you realize once more that Laurie knows what is best for you. But what can I do? Do? There's only one thing to do now. Kill her. Of course, it took a lot of persuasion, but I know just how to persuade Larry. And in the end, he agreed with me. And it will be so simple and so safe. Everyone knows she's a creature of dark moods. Everyone knows that for days on end, she doesn't speak to you. That she goes for long automobile rides by herself at night. Well, how does everybody know this? Well, I told them. But it isn't true. Well, they think it is. You've been planning this for a long time, haven't you? Since the day you got married. You're a wicked woman. You belong to me, and I belong to you. You know that, don't you, Larry? Yes, God help me, I know it. Now, you know what you're to do. Now, turn out on the coast route, a mile and a half below Gull Point. There's no guardrail. You let the car roll and, and, and jump just before it goes over. It's more than 100 feet to the surface. Why do I have to do it? I don't hate her. You do. Why don't you take that gun you keep in your desk and just shoot and it. And have the gun traced in the fingerprints? Use your head, Larry. 
This way it'll look like an accident, a, a break face. An accident that occurred when poor Roberta was on one of her moody midnight rides. The thought of everything, haven't you? Yes, my dear, because I'm thinking of us. I'll follow you. I'll be waiting up the road to drive you home. When will you do it? Tonight? Might as well. The sooner the better. That's right. That's right, my dear. The sooner the better. <laughs> What are you stopping for, Larry? This turnout. Let's look at the view a minute. Oh. It is lovely, isn't it? Sliver of the moon across the water. Let's walk out to the edge. Come on, we can get a bit Wait, we're not supposed to... Supposed to what? Nothing. Larry. Are you happy with me? Why, sure. Sure I am. What makes you ask? You seem so strange all evening. You saw your mother today, didn't you? Yes. I can always tell when you've seen her. You come back to me different. I'm sorry. Well, what terrible things has she told you about me this time? Oh, nothing. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear. I don't care. So long as I have you... Isn't it lovely out here? Be careful. Don't you get too close to the edge. Oh, it's perfectly safe. Listen. You can hear the surf. Mm. And see it way down there, foaming in the moonlight? So beautiful. Tell me, Larry. Tell me. Tell you what? Tell me you love me. Why me? Why do you want me to love you? There must have been other men, older, stronger men who loved you. I, I'm just... Well, you've said it a hundred times. Just a mama's boy. <laughs> well, maybe that's why I love you. Maybe that's what I need. A man I can care for and look after, protect. There are women like that, you know. Like my mother? No, not like her. Women like me. I'm no shrinking violet. I'm capable and I'm smart. I'm the equal of any man, so I... I scare men. But I don't scare you. Do I, Tom? No, Roberta. You've never scared me. And I never will. I'll take care of you. And our baby. Our baby? Is it ours, Roberta? Harry. What what a dreadful thing to say. Is it? Who gave you the idea that it wasn't? Well... What a filthy, vile woman your mother is. She will stop at nothing. That's right, Roberta. Mrs. Mother, Ray. you're supposed to be waiting in the car. You're supposed to be doing what I told you. Get your hands off me. I warned you. Let go of me. You. Help me, Larry. Larry I'm help sleeping. Me. Push her. Larry, not you. I, I, go I, on. Roberta. Go on, take your baby with you and leave me mine. Oh, God, Mother. What have we done? So call me Mother. It only took a moment to release the handbrake on the car, send it rolling over the cliff, and Roberta's accidental death was complete. It was all over, over and done with, and Larry and I were back together again. We slept late the next morning, and we were dallying over our brunch in the sun-filled breakfast room, still in our robes and slippers when the doorbell rang. Yes? Mrs. Ryder? Yes. I want to talk to you, ma'am. Well, I'm afraid I'm not dressed. It's all right. We don't mind. Well, just a minute. You can't come in here like this. Who are you? Police. Police? Lieutenant Ross, homicide. This is Sergeant Abbott. Morning, ma'am. Well, what is it? What's happened? What do you want? Just want to ask a few questions. You have any idea where your son is, Mrs. Ryder? Yes. Yes, he's in the other room. Well, he'd better hear this, too. Will you call him? 
Larry? Yes? Some men are here. They want to talk to you. The, the police. The police? What do they want with me? Mr. Ryder, when did you see your wife last? Last night at dinner. Why? She's dead, Mr. Ryder. Oh, dead? Oh, Larry, how horrible. Her body was found on the rocks near Gold Point this morning. Car went over, too. Larry, I told you, you shouldn't let her go out alone on those long rides at night. She was in the habit of driving alone at night? Oh, yes, whenever she got into one of her moods. You weren't home last night, Mr. Ryder? No, I... I slept over here. Did you have an argument with your wife last night? No. Was she in one of her moods last night? You might say so. Well, where were you last night, Mrs. Ryder? Well, I was right here with Larry. We watched TV until quite late. You sure of that? Well, I can prove it. Larry was with me. Just what are you driving at? This. You recognize it, Mr. Ryder? Hmm, it's a wristwatch. I gave it to her for a wedding present. Do you know there was a message engraved on the back of this watch? No. The letters are so tiny, it looks like a design until you put it under a magnifying glass. Message? What does it say? It says, I have only one enemy in the world. If anything should happen to me, my mother-in-law will be the cause. Oh, that vicious witch. Why can't she let us alone? Why does she have to come back from the dead to haunt us? No, no, Mother. Don't you call me Mother. All right, I won't call you Mother. The word is too good for you. You're the vicious witch. You're the one who's evil. Why couldn't you have left us alone? Why couldn't you have left Roberta and me live our own lives? Oh, my heart, I, I am going to faint. Go ahead, faint, drop dead. I'm smelling salt. It's in the desk here. Gentlemen, the inscription on my wife's watch is correct. My mother murdered her. All right, up with your hands, all of you. Drop that gun, Mrs. Ryder. Oh, no, and don't either of you. Put Please. it away, madam. Somebody's liable to get hurt. Indeed, yes, someone's liable to get killed. But I won't put it away until I hear my son out. Well, Larry, did you have something else to say? Not much, only that you killed her, and I hope you hang for it. This is your last word to your mother? You haven't been a mother to me ever. Parasite, a leech, a selfish, aging hag, but no mother. That's all you have to say? That's all. And this is my reply, dear Larry. <laughs> Hey, grab her, Let Annie. me go. I got the gun. Let me go. I got her. Let me have it. Let me use it on myself. I must join Larry. We've always been together, Larry and I. You mustn't separate us now. You don't realize how it is with us. Lori and Larry, such a lovely couple, people always say. Suspense. In which Miss Agnes Moorhead starred in Don't Call Me Mother, written, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. In a moment, the names of our supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. The more things change, the more impressive is the unwavering reputation CBS News enjoys for good judgment, accuracy, and speed. That fine reputation has been earned through the dedicated efforts of men like Edward R. Murrow of CBS News. Since the days of the Second World War, Mr. Murrow's been on the job, helping to keep Americans informed. More and more radio listeners are turning to Edward R. Murrow for a better understanding of our changing world. Every Monday through Friday evening, follow the course of history with Edward R. Murrow with the news. Our World News Roundup, heard daily on most of these same stations, is another reason why CBS News is respected everywhere. Every morning, our World News Roundup takes you where important things are happening for eyewitness reports by experts. Tomorrow on CBS Radio, you have a date with history on the World News Roundup. Supporting Agnes Moorhead in Don't Call Me Mother were Kathy Lewis, James McCallion, Barney Phillips, and Norm Alden. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Mr. Dick Crenna in Night on Red Mountain. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Tonight, Miss Miller stars on the CBS Radio Network.